So I'm just going to go through some of the more typical settings that we would normally configure uh, with a Suprema BioLite N2. So to get into the menu without having previously put any uh, new employees in first, press the escape button and uh, we're straight into the uh, user screen. Um, we're going to leave users for now. We're going to come to that in another session. So I'm going to drop down to um, the authentication uh, menu option and um, go within there so authentication mode let's have a look inside there so here we have three different options fingerprint mode card mode ID mode um, if we have a look at fingerprint mode first so we have two settings in there we have finger only that's currently set to always and finger plus uh, pin number or, or password um, is set to never. Well, that's pretty much how we want it. We want us to set up this terminal so that it just uses uh, finger only for clocking in, clocking out. So I'm just going to come out of there and go back down to card mode. So in here, card only or fob only, we've got set as never. Uh, down here, um, card plus uh, finger is never, but card plus pin number uh, or password is also never. And further down, we've got card plus finger or card plus pin number is always. So that means we can't just use a, a fob or a card on its own to clock in and clock out. Well, that's not quite how I'd like it to be set in this particular instance. So I'm going to change that to be that one, that option there to be never. And that allows me to go back up and change the card only option to be always and I press OK on that and that's now set. So just looking down at ID mode we can see that uh, we've got uh, never against uh, ID plus finger, ID plus pin number but we've got always against ID plus finger or ID plus pin number so that means people if they want to can use a combination of typing in their ID number and then placing their finger or then typing in their PIN number. As you notice there, I didn't press the uh, a button there for, for a good few seconds and it's timed out and it's gone out to its main main screen, main idle screen. So I'm going to go get back into the menu. There wasn't anything I wanted to change there anyway, really. Um, but what I'm going to do is go straight down to display. So we've got the uh, menu timeout option down here. That was just 20 seconds. And as we can see, it's not really a great deal of time to make any changes we might need before times the menu option times out. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that up to uh, 60 seconds. I can make it so it's always on. It does mean that I've got to remember to escape back out of the menu once I've finished making any changes. Um, I think we'll make it 60 seconds. Further up, uh, there's a backlight backlight timeout option uh, that's currently set to 20 seconds so the, the menu the, the display will, will fade to a, a more sort of grayed out or dull setting which is going to use a little bit less power not be quite so bright um, after uh, well 20 seconds or 60 seconds of non-use so I think we're going to going to sit with six 60 seconds and I'm going to press OK to set those those values up um, I'm going to drop down to uh, device. So here I can have a look at uh, date and time settings. Now, if I just drop down a few here, I've got an option there which says time sync enabled. Now, if you're using BioStar 2 uh, to operate with the uh, BioLite N2 device, that, that option might be fine, but we're not going to be using BioStar 2 in this particular instance. So I'm going to disable that time sync option. And once I've disabled it, I can then um, choose to um, edit or change the date and time within the display itself. Otherwise, that option would not be made available to me. Um, so as it happens, those times are currently correct. So I'm going to drop down and I'm going to go to date and time format. So I'm going to change that to be DDMMYY. And we can set the time to be in 24 hour mode or in AM PM 12, 12 hour mode. So we're going to stick with 24 hour clock. And I'm going to press OK this time. Hopefully it's going to remain, uh, retain those settings. 
Uh, I'm going to drop down to relay and have a quick look in there. So at the moment the relay is disabled. If I was to enable the relay, that means every, every time you would have a valid clocking transaction, then the relay would fire. Um, so if you wanted some very basic levels of access control, that would be something that you probably want to set on. But for the time being, I'm going to leave that one off. If we drop down to have a look at the network settings, um, we're going to look at TCP IP. Uh, that is the default port number. We tend to keep that uh, as it is. It's currently set up to DHCP. Now, if I actually want to change the IP address, which I do in this instance, I set that to be disabled, and then I can uh, actually alter the uh, uh, IP address. Now, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here, uh, if I can, and uh, so we can see some of the function keys. Um, the reason I'm wanting to do that is you might notice this, it's giving us a few indicators up here of some of what these function keys up here do. So the top one, uh, so the F2 is uh, allowing me to, to use F2 as a, as a delete key. So that's deleting off the IP address which is currently stored in there. Um, I'm just going to type in the IP address that I want using the keypad. And to put the dot in, it's actually suggesting that F1 is going to be used as the dot. Um, I'm going to zoom in a bit now so you can see a little bit more what's on the screen. Uh, one, six, eight, one, dot, two, five, three. And I'm going to OK that. So that's my IP address in. I'm going to change the gateway as well, which is in the same way. One, nine, two, dot, one, six, eight, dot one um, dot one and okay that and let's have a look at, at uh, what the subnet is yeah we need to set that as well uh, so that's gonna just gonna delete that out and then we'll make that uh, 255 dot, dot zero dot zero and OK that. Fine. So we're happy with that. We'll press OK and that's that now saved. Um, the server option here, uh, if you're using BioStar 2 uh, for connecting to your uh, BioLite N2 device, then you may want to change that setting. Um, so, uh, but if, if we're using something like Focus or um, something, uh, another bit of software which actually pulls the clock, then we're going to leave it in this, this current mode here. Uh, if we escape out of there. Um, down here we have event log. So this basically um, allow, well, it, it shows all of the uh, actions which have been uh, performed um, so far are on the device. So all of the clockings that have gone through, any um, changes within the menu options that have been made every time the device gets connected to, are all logged within the, um, within the event log. Now, the event log can be searched uh, using this function here. So it could be uh, searched uh, using various different uh, parameters, um, different types of event could be um, uh, searched for. So if you're looking for all um, events made by a particular employee, then you could, we could go down to the user option here. Um, we would search for what, what the user would be, and then that would show us up. But we've not got any employees in at the moment, so that's not showing anything. Uh, so we can also delete the uh, log file if we want to. If we're sure that we're completely up to date, uh, we've got all of the data off the terminal that we need through the software that we use, then we can clear the logs if we wanted to do that. Obviously they've they've gone for good at that stage, but um, it might be uh, we want to sort of keep the, me me the memory nice and clear, uh, clear not too filled up, um, so we can clear our log file down if we wanted to do that. Obviously you've got to be very careful, you make, make sure you've got everything that you need off the terminal first. Um, so we're just going back to the main idle screen there, you can see that the date format is, is, is now changed. Um, I've got a little uh, indicator at the top there to say that we've got um, a, a network connection available. Um, so Basically, after about 60 seconds, that uh, screen will, will dim down, um, which is the, the backlight option that we looked at earlier. 
So those are most of the settings I wanted to look at in this session. Uh, we're going to have another session uh, where we're going to look at how to enroll employees and administrators onto the device. Thank you.